Okay, so get yourself ready and prepared for just, just the opening um, cross legs in Sostakasana. So just sit on your left and come into a good cross legged position. So just wriggle about, just feel that you're sitting evenly and with levelness and then grip around your knees lift and open the chest draw your shoulders down away from your ears take some deep inhalations deep exhalations just allow your eyes to look ahead and down just looking at the floor listening to the sound of the breath keeping your eyes still in the sockets just observing your breath as it in as you inhale and exhale And then bring your hands into Namaste. Press the palms together. Lengthen from the armpits into the elbows. The elbows into the heels of the hands. And then allow your eyes to gently close. Listen to the sound of the breath as it enters and as it exits. Focusing on long, slow, deep, deliberate in-breaths and long, slow, deep, deliberate out-breaths. Draw your chin down to meet your chest. Just spend a moment to seek to generate a genuine heartfelt sense of gratitude for something or someone. Hold on to that feeling of abundance in the heart area and then very gently release the backs of your hands down towards your knees, palms facing upwards and then raise your head, allow your eyes to gently open, lift and open the chest. Take a good strong deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the right side draw in the abdomen all the way across so your belly button points at that right knee and beyond it turning deeply using the exhalation to intensify the turn using the back hand to dig into the cushion or the block or the floor that you're sitting on and turn so the back hand helps you to elevate the spine upwards. And then come back to the center, grip around your knees, lift and open the chest. 
take a good deep inhalation and then turn to the left side drawing your abdomen across from the right to the left trying to get the belly button to point at that left knee and beyond it and then gently come back to the center just come on to all fours have your hands as wide apart as your mat so the thumbs the little fingers as wide as the mat the thumbs as wide as the mat and then turn your toes under and then come up into dog down so explore the body through the pose observe the evenness of action so between the left side of the body and the right side of the body between the legs and the arms between the breath and the effort just work to observe so we've been working in hips this week so i want you to turn your heels inwards this is the wrong action but i just want you to feel the result in the hips so as you turn your heels inwards towards each other and maybe you notice that there's restriction in the hips the hips kind of close off at the at the kind of outside edges of the top of the hip and then do the opposite turn the heels back and then draw the heels away from each other and then see if you can lift your seat bones a little higher draw the front rim of the pelvis in towards the tops of the thighs a little more deeply so turn the fronts of the thighs inwards turn the backs of the thighs outwards and it's that outwards action of the backs of the thighs that really helps you to elevate the uh, the seat bones up towards the ceiling step forwards come up into a standing position and then get yourself some blocks for your hands for uttanasana turn your toes in so turn your toes in a little so the outside edge of your feet are in line with the mat so the big toes are closer together than your heels are and then just have your hands on your hips turn the fronts of the thighs inwards really significantly so again you feel that the backs of the thighs broaden out and then lift and open the chest and then hinge at the hips and then reach down bring your hands underneath your shoulders and then activate your legs tighten your kneecaps press the kneecap through to the back of the knee turn the fronts of the thighs inwards pick up the heel and turn the heels out a little bit more and then notice that maybe you have more lift in the seat bones you can draw the front rim of the pelvis into the top of the legs more precisely extend the chin and the chest forwards if you've got problems with your hips then don't do this next stage but bring you up everyone just bring your um your your feet so that the outside edge of the feet are lined up with the edge of the mat but if you've got problem with your hip, hips don't do this next stage so the next stage is to do the wrong thing and it's to pick up the heels and turn them in like we just did with dog down and I want you to do this so you can feel that when you turn your legs outwards in this way, then you can almost immediately feel that there is resistance in the hips. I don't want you to kind of try and move beyond that resistance because it's going to be too strong. Turn the heels in as much as they can. And you really do feel that I can feel the resistance all around my sacrum 
and especially around these kind of outer hips. So then turn your heels back out and then just observe the difference in the freedom of the hips. So it's not just the position of the feet, it's the action of the legs. The position of the feet kind of starts the action of the legs, but the position of the feet is partly that, partly it, but it's the turning in of the shins, the turning in of the thighs, of the front thighs, so that the backs of the calves broaden outward, so that the backs of the thighs broaden outward, giving you freedom in the hips, project the chin and the chest forwards. And then just bring your hands onto your hips and then come up into a standing position. Good, just have those blocks where you can reach them on the right side of your mat and then lift and open the chest. Turn your thighs inwards so that you feel the backs of the thighs broaden outwards. And then that gives you a little space to tuck the tailbone in without disturbing the legs. Lift and open the chest, drive your spine upwards. Bring your arms out nice and wide in towards the chest and then step nice and wide and then turn your left toes in, your right leg and foot all the way out and then swing your arms around so that your shoulders are in line with the front edge of the mat and then bring your hands onto your hips. At this stage, feel where the pelvis is. So is this back leg pelvis further back towards the back leg than the front leg? So pick up the back heel and then really rotate this front leg inwards. Turn the front leg inwards so that the back of the thigh broadens outwards, turning the heel towards the back of the room. Lift and open the chest, turning the thighs of both legs, the frontal thighs of both legs, so that the backs of the thighs broaden outwards and then come forward into Parjvottanasana. Just reach down and find the blocks. So have a look at your heels. Heels should be in line with each other. Often you find that this front foot kind of comes in line with the toes of the back foot. So everyone just do that. Turn, bring your foot, oh, the, your left foot over to the, sorry, your right foot over to the left side of the mat. And then you feel that you're crossing your legs and actually bringing the hips level is almost impossible, isn't it? Because your hips, your feet aren't in the right place. So just bring that right foot back over to the right side so that your heels are in line with each other. If you've got really stiff hips, keep bringing that foot over to the right side. If you find that you can't balance very well, then bring that foot more over to the right side. So have your hands on your blocks, turn the thighs inwards, especially of that back leg so that you feel the back of the thigh broaden so that this back leg hip draws down Project the chin and the chest forwards. Draw the front rim of the pelvis of that right leg really firmly into the top of the thigh. Breathing evenly and deeply. If you can go down a bit lower onto your blocks, then do. But not at the expense of rounding the back. Try and keep the back straight. If you can find the floor, then find the floor. So at this stage, just readdress your feet. Make sure that they're in the right position. Turn the thighs, the fronts of the thighs inwards so that the backs of the thighs can broaden. Lengthen the front chest forwards. So keeping the legs straight if you can. I know there's some knee injuries, so just work with the injury. If you need to bend your knee, and it's only because you can't straighten your leg, then you can always lift the toes of that front foot and hook the block underneath the foot, underneath the toes, so that it helps you to straighten that leg. But that's only if that's not gonna cause discomfort. Project the chin and the chest forward. Feel that the, you're continuously turning the fronts of the thighs. Just feel if the hips are level. 
So if you're using blocks, stay on blocks. If you're if you've got knee problems or hip problems, which actually is, is quite a few of us today, then just stay at this stage. If you don't, if none of those things apply, then bring your left hand over onto the right hand side of the of the foot, and then bring the left hand into the small of the back, and then turn the chest to face the right side, drawing the abdomen across the thigh, drawing the top shoulder towards the back of the room, or to the left side of the room rather. And then if you can, reach up, lengthening the spine, so lengthening into the chest. And then uncoil. Uncoil and then bend that front leg, step forward, come up into the standing position and then bring the blocks onto the left side and just come over onto the left side. So breathe in nice and softly. In through the nose and out through the nose. So just stay in relatively briefly in that power of Rita action. The most important thing with any power of Rita is that you can successfully manage to lengthen the spine before you turn. It's the same action as we do in Swastikasana. We lengthen the spine upwards and then turn. So when you come into that power of Rita, if everything's kind of punched like this, this turn is going to look I mean, we just immediately look like I'm 100 years old, don't I? So you've got to lift and open the chest and turn. So it's got it's that elevation of the spine that gives you um, gives you a lift, gives you the turn, the access into the turn, the Tadasana. Bring your arms out nice and wide in towards the chest and then step or jump the feet apart, turn. Your right toes in steeply, rotate on the left leg and then swing the shoulders around so that your shoulders are in line with the end of your mat. And bring the hands down. And then pick up the back heel and turn that thigh inwards, turn the back of the thigh outwards. Feel that your feet are in line. So it's your heels are in line with each other. Keep feeling that you can hit the front leg, so the back leg hip forward, lift and open the chest, turning both of the front, the front thigh and the back thigh inwards, hinging from the pelvis, not from the back, find the blocks. So here you can see if your feet are properly in line to so adjust if they're not. Turn the front thighs in. Turn the back thighs in. So the back, so turn the back leg thigh in. So the backs of the thighs broaden outwards. Draw the front rim of the pelvis in towards the top of the leg. Lengthen the spine forwards. So that action has to come from the pelvis. So if the pelvis, the front rim of the pelvis is digging right into the top of the thigh, then you can elevate the spine because the seat bones are lifting up. If you can come down lower, then come down incrementally lower. And then find the floor if you can. If you can't find the floor, just stay with the blocks and then you can work with the blocks in the next stage. So just at this stage, just notice that if you come all the way down to the floor, often what happens is that you kind of round your back, that the back start, starts to um, shrink. So reassess the legs, re-evaluate the action of the legs, turning the backs of the thighs outwards, and then draw the front rim of the pelvis into the tops of the thighs or the top of the front thigh, and then elevate the spine forwards. So either stay at this stage, if you're working with an injury today, or stay with the blocks if you can't reach the floor. Bring your left hand over, so your right hand over to the boards, over to the outside of the left hand. Bring your right hand into the small of the back. 
sorry, left hand over to the outside of the right foot. I'm getting that wrong. Right hand over to the outside of the left foot, left hand into the back, lengthen the spine and turn the abdomen. Breathe in evenly and deeply and then elevate the arm up towards the ceiling. The power of Rita Trikonasana lengthen into the spine by really working with that front rim of the pelvis. Okay, uncoil and then bend the front leg, step in and then come up into Tadasana and then just come into your Tadasana pose, inner edge of the feet together, lifting and opening the chest, breathing nice and evenly. Stretch your arms out in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms all the way out and then raise your arms over your head. Gently release your arms down to the floor. And then just come down onto your back and down into Supta Badikanasana just to really rest the hips, rest the back, just lengthen along the floor. Just use supports for your hips if you need to. So putting blocks underneath the outsides of the thighs if there's stiffness in your hips and it's difficult to stay. So just breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. Just allowing yourself just to rest into the floor. Go for a bit of yin energy rather than the yang energy of the standing poses. when you're ready stretch your arms up towards the ceiling interlock the fingers turn the palms all the way up and then lengthen your arms along the floor so activating the pose a little more deeply broaden the abdomen so that the abdominal walls draw towards the floor Press the heels firmly together so that the shins and the thighs become more dynamic. Extend from your shoulders into the tops of the hands. Breathing evenly and deeply just 
bring your arms back to the ceiling and then swap the interlock of the fingers do the unnatural interlock of the fingers turning the palms all the way out and then lengthening your arms along the floor Breathing evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath. Observing that as you exhale, as you get to the end of the exhalation, if you're extending your arms away, you start to really stretch open the armpits. Just release your arms down to the floor and then just, sorry, release your arms and then rest your hands and your lower ribs with your elbows just resting into the floor. And then very gently draw your knees towards each other, your knees together, your feet apart. And then draw in your right knee towards your chest. So grip around the right knee. So interlock your fingers, draw the right knee in towards your chest and then press the left heel into the floor. Keep pulling the right knee into the chest and then lengthen the left leg away along the floor, keeping the heel pressing into the floor until the leg straightens. So this strictly speaking, isn't a, an Iyengar style pose at all, but it's just a way of really working into your hip. Lengthen into the heel, pull the toes towards your kneecap of the bent leg, as well as the right leg. So you really activate that right leg, pull the knee in towards the chest. So you feel that compression in the right hip, in front of the right hip. So we've been working at the around, we've been working in the side of the hip. Now this compresses the front of the hip. So lengthen from the bent knee into the heel, lengthen into the hip into the heel of the straight leg. To dasnerize in that length that long leg. And then just gently release, just bend both knees. Have the knees together, the feet apart, and then just notice the difference in the two hips. The right hip probably feels a little warmer, a little more kind of pliable. So bring the feet together, knees together, but then bring just the left knee in towards your chest. So grip around the knee, bring the left knee in towards your chest, and then this time press the right heel into the floor and then slide that heel along the floor until the leg straightens. Keep the heel in contact with the floor even when the leg is straightened. Flex in the, um, the left heel so that you, the bent leg knee, flex in that heel so that you bring the shin to life. Pull the um, left knee into the chest lengthening into the right leg breathing evenly drawing the elbows out away from the sides of the body a little just so that you really open up in the side ribs and in the hip just breathing into the stretch
Okay, and then just release, bring the knees, so bend the knees, bend the knees, press the knees together, and then have the feet apart for a moment. So it's kind of reverse Supta Baddhakanasana. Just rest in your hands on your lower ribs. Just breathing evenly and deeply. And then just pull your knees in towards your chest. Just have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom, just a gentle massage on the spine. And then just sit yourself up and then just come on to all fours for a moment. Have your hands as wide apart as your shoulders. Turn your toes under, have the feet as wide apart as your hips and then come up into dog down and after that hip opener, maybe in dog down, your dog down feels lighter. Maybe there is more obvious flexibility in the front of the hip. So we've closed the front of the hip and now we're going to open it with Urdhva Mukha Svanasana dog with the head up. So just stay in dog down for a moment. Just really work to let press the hands and the feet into the floor and to lift out of the hands and the feet up into the hips. Turning the thighs, the fronts of the thighs inward so the backs of the thighs broaden so you get that space in the hips that you need. That draw the front rim of the pelvis into the top of the legs so that you find that space in the hips. Keep the hands where they are, keep the feet where they are, and then swing the hips forwards. Keep the legs away from the floor. Draw the crease of the elbows to face the front of the room, and then lengthen up into the chest. Extending into the heels, drawing the diaphragm through the arms, lifting the front chest. If there's no problem with your neck, draw the chin up towards the ceiling. and then come back up into dog down. So when you come up into dog up, not only do you open up the front of the hip, but if you lift up into the chest, you can really spread and broaden the diaphragm region. So just use dog down just to Reset just to make sure that you're in line. Work in the front rim of the pelvis into the tops of the thighs to release the sacrum. And then keep the arms straight, keep the legs straight. Swing the hips forwards, crease of the elbows facing the front, press into the heels, lengthen the front chest upwards, try and broaden the diaphragm. Breathing evenly and deeply. And then come back up into dog down <coughs> excuse me okay and then just come down onto your knees come into cross-legged position and then just sit yourself in 
cross legs directly on the floor, grip around your knees and lift and open the chest. So breathing evenly and deeply, listen to the sound of the breath driving the front chest upwards. Now, if you can't, if you're protecting your back and you're not coming forwards, just stay lifting the front chest, gripping around the knees, lifting and opening and broadening at the diaphragm. If you can come forwards, then almost like you're picking up the abdomen, drawing it towards the lower ribs, come forwards, hinging at the hips. Keep lengthening the chin and the chest forwards. Grab yourself a block or if you don't or create a couple of fists for your hands and rest your hands on your hips or if you on your not on your hips, that's a strange place to put your head. Um, uh, rest your head down onto your onto the right onto the piled up fists. Or if you can't reach the floor, then do the same action, pile one fist on top of the other. And then rest your hand, your fists on the back of a of a block, just so that you are bringing the floor up to you a little. So breathe in evenly and deeply. So this pose is particularly beneficial for the liver and the kidneys. But it's quietening as well. Focusing on long, slow, deep, deliberate in breaths, deliberate out breaths. Okay, raise your head and then come up into a seated position. <clears throat> so, coming up from a forward bend is always quietening for the brain, isn't it? So just enjoy that sudden quietness that comes over the brain. Now, however you're crossing your legs, whether you're in half pad masana or in just normal cross legs, swap the crossing of the legs so you cross your legs the kind of unnatural way. So half pad masana with the other leg on the top or cross legs with the legs crossed the other way. And then just lift and open the chest. Now notice that actually this probably feels a little bit weird. Maybe you need to just adjust the buttock flesh because maybe it feels like you're not kind of sitting evenly. So lift and open the chest. Observe how you connect with the floor. And then come forwards again. And this time you're going to pile up your fists, but the not the same way you're going to pile up your fists. The opposite way around so you whatever if, it, if your left fist was on the top before then have the right fist on the top and then bring your head down so coming into this with the legs crossed in the other way round tends to give you more of a stretch in the hips because you're maybe naturally not as flexible on this side so just work in 
maybe don't go down as low if there's extra challenge or maybe just observe that stronger feeling and breathe into it Okay, and then just sit yourself up, come back up into a seated position. Just observe the quietness that comes from the forward bend. And then just re-cross your legs. Just do the natural crossing of your legs. Just grip around your knees, draw your chin forwards and down so that it contacts, makes contact with the chest. Chin in the chest makes contact, Jalandra Banda. Just focus on long, slow, deep, deliberate breaths. Allow the in-breath to not just draw into the lungs but to penetrate into the arms and into the legs almost like you're inflating the body if you want to intensify the energetic action of the pose incorporate mula banda lifting the anal sphincter up towards the navel and the diaphragm inflating the body allowing the body to fill up with the pose Okay, release Mula Banda, release Jalandra Banda, grip around the knees and elevate the spine upwards, taking a good, strong, deep inhalation. With the exhalation, turn all the way around to the right side, digging the back hand into the floor to elevate the spine upwards. So just like I was trying to get us to do in Paravita Trikonasta, lengthen the spine and then turn. Use the out breath to intensify the turn. Okay. 
and then come back to the center lift and open the chest drive the spine upwards take a good strong deep inhalation in through the nose and then turn to the left And then gently come back to the center. Just stretch your legs out along the floor and then just stay with the knees together, the feet apart for a moment or two. Just rest in your back into the floor. And then bring the feet together, keep the feet as close to the seat bones as you can and come back into Supta Baddha So breathe in evenly and deeply, just allowing that little bit of yin energy to release the body down into the floor, feeling gravity drawing the body down into the floor. So letting go of the physical hold just observing how gravity draws you down into the floor and opens the front of the hip, opens the inner groin. So we've been working on the outer hip, on the front of the hip, on the inner hip. If you wanted to open up the back of the hip, you could do pigeon pose. Jacka Patasana. We opened up the back of the hip as well as the front of the hip in the bent knee in towards the chest with the straight leg. Okay, draw your knees together, get hold of the sides of the mat, pull your knees in towards your chest, and then elevate your legs up to the ceiling. Work to turn the fronts of the thighs, feel the backs of the thighs broadening outwards, lengthening from the inner groin into the inner heel. So Viparita Karani, turn the crease of the elbows up to face the ceiling so that you broaden the collarbone, broaden the diaphragm region. Just breathing evenly and deeply, keeping the legs elevating, lengthening from the hips into the heels, keeping the jaw soft and the tongue soft. Okay, and then very gently bend your knees. Bring the feet back down onto the floor. Just roll yourself up into a seated position. Just get your folded blanket, 
just make yourself a little pillow for your head just move your equipment out of the way just so that you can stretch out without feeling like you're kind of trapped by your equipment come on to the elbows make sure you're in a really good straight line and then bring the back of the neck and the head onto the folded blanket if you're wearing glasses it's nice to take them off and then just bring your arms out to the sides of the body and finally let your legs completely release breathe evenly and deeply listening to the sound of the breath let go of the arms and of the legs feeling as though there is a heavy weight on top of the arms and on top of the legs feeling as though there is a mountain growing up and out of the legs and of the arms and of the chest and of the head so that you're pinned to the floor but you can still breathe you can still feel your energy rising to the top as you are giving the mountain above you the energy to extend into the sky Observe the lightness of the energy that rises to the top of the skin. And distribute that evenly around the body to the tips of the toes. Tips of the fingers. Top of the head. Observe how you make contact with the floor. To listen to the sound of the breath and let go. Okay, when you're ready, just gently wriggle your toes, wriggle your fingers, bring yourself back out of this pose of Shavasana. Bend your knees in towards your chest, just have a little rock from side to side, from top to bottom, just giving yourself just the gentlest of massages on the spine. And then roll over onto your right side. Stretch out your top leg, come back up into a seated position. Just a final cross legs with your hands in the masti, just a final spinal lift. Drawing the breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Draw the energy of the breath into the abdomen. the Samanic region so that you connect with the energy that you released through your practice that good positive healthy flow of clean energy that the extensions and the forward bends and the twists and the inversions bring to the body and to the mind and then gently draw your chin down to meet your chest Spend a moment to acknowledge the positive energy you've created inside. And then send some of that positive energy out into the world. And 
then when you're ready, just gently release the backs of your hands down towards your knees. As you raise your head, allow your eyes to softly open and the focus to softly come back. Thank you very much. Thank you. So hopefully you feel as though you have quite, quite gently today opened up your energy, especially around the hips and the tops of the legs. And um, you've got lots of positive energy to put into your day. So um, thank you very much for joining me.